C2B Revolution, helping chiropractic students think big in order to live large. I'm your host, Noah Voles, and today I'm here with Dr. Kyle uh, Daigle. I, I don't remember how to pronounce your last name. Uh, he's a chiropractor at Ultimate Performance uh, Cairo and Rehab, and he specializes in uh, combining multiple fields of science to really help his patients regain a sense of neurological balance and function. Uh, in addition to his full-time practice there, he's the chief medical officer at SNA Biotech in Austin, Texas, and a co-inventor of NeuroSage, uh, the US patent pending biotech device. Uh, so Dr. Kyle, thanks so much for being here. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. So, um, you know, we, we talked pre-roll a little bit about what it takes to uh, be a successful functional neurologist in practice. Um, you know, what is your kind of three keys to success for chiropractic students wanting to get into functional neurology and really help people with that modality? Three keys. First of all, um, having the biggest toolbox you possibly can, uh, and that toolbox meaning that think that you need to have a good grasp over nutrition, you know, supplementation. Out what deficiencies, you know, maybe which area the brain needs to do proper rehab, and then the third the preparation. You know, I think that you need to have a game plan because your patients typically come in and they're a wreck. And, you know, traditional route, you know, you know, depending on which route they go, you know, this kind of puppy mill where you get people in and out pretty quick. Um, and it's not just this cookie cutter approach. So I think that, you know, being very, very prepared on a treatment plan and thoroughly knowing how to work that treatment plan to, you know, to guarantee success. And that just comes with integrating everything. You know, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Datis and Brock and Dr. Malilo. And, you know, these guys, um, you know, you can do straight functional neurology, but yet at their nutritional issue, if, you know, patients are still eating foods that they shouldn't be eating or they're not taking certain, you know, maybe B vitamins to help out methylation or maybe some anti-inflammatories, you can do all the rehab in the world, but that patient's going to significantly like regress. So um, that would be my three keys, I think, for success is just you know, having this uh, massive toolbox you know, understanding, you know, everything you can about the eyes, the vestibular system, vibration therapies, or, you know, haptic um, to nutrition. And then two is just prepared. And then three is making sure that, that um, you know, you can work good plans. Yeah. So um, in terms of that, that preparation, can you talk a little bit about the you know, kind of the patient flow in your office. Uh, a, a lot of chiropractic schools these days are kind of saying, you know, three to five minute patient visits, see as many patients as you can in order to be, you know, financially viable as a chiropractor. But uh, it seems like you've developed a flow in your office where you're able to personalize care, give people the attention they need, and then also, you know, recognize that financial success. Can you talk a little bit about that? We have three incredible chiropractors in our clinic, uh, and we also have a nutritionist on staff. And, uh, you know, that if you're going to run a, a, a clinic, like, you know, people are in and out, you know, that's probably works best for a pain management. But if you're getting someone with you know, Lyme disease, someone with photos or someone with vertigo or multiple cirrhosis, that kind of cookie cutter approach typically doesn't work that great. Um, and you know, these people need, you know, specific targeted care and, um, and yeah, you know, I, I just think that, uh, again, if you have a pain management practice that works phenomenal, uh, high volume, you know, hands down, uh, you know, we have a, we have a pretty big practice. Um, you know, we see up to sometimes 75 patients in a day, but our patients are here for, you know, anywhere between 45 minutes at a minimum to an hour and a half, two hours. Um, so, you know, I have a pretty large practice, uh, with a lot of different rooms, big rehab room, but we really work patients up because if you get a patient who has, you know, the metabolic fatigue, their thresholds, you know, very low, you know, this patient has to be able to do some eye movements and sit down and doing some vagal nerve exercises where they're gargling for maybe, you know, 45 seconds and need to take a break. You know, if you get a patient, 
you start throwing a bunch of stuff out, patients are going to just fatigue out. And if you reach that, you know, threshold, you know, you can actually do more harm. You're doing good, you know, doing good. So, um, yeah, man, I just, I think that, you know, really good, you know, tailored care on an individual works great instead of just running people in and out. Yeah. So, you know, let's say uh, a chiropractic student wants to kind of uh, recreate something similar to what you have. You know, we've got, you know, four people that you're, you're, you know, that you're working with collaborative care. You're, you know, on average, people are in your office for 45 minutes to 90 minutes. Um, you know, what, what would be kind of the, the stepping stones towards something like that? Is that something that you think a chiropractic student could start day one or what advice would you offer for somebody who wants to kind of go in that direction you know, in terms of building towards that? So the way I did it starting out was I started very small and I mean, small as in, um, I was, I was, so, you know, I sold it and, uh, just worked my way up into, you know, we have now 10 total employees within our clinic. Uh, um, so I started small and then eventually, you know, grew into the first clinic was 400 square feet. And then the second clinic was 800. And then the third clinic was 2,600. And then the 1,500 square feet, you know, starting out in school, you know, you don't have a lot of money. Um, fortunately, what I was able to do is was save some money, and then I also worked with a chiropractor. I was a fool, saved it up, and I used that initial money I saved up to be able to open up this first practice. Then, first practice, island cabinet with a portable table, and uh, I had a Bosu ball, a genie rub, and a handheld laser, and that was what I got. So I mean, literally under. A a thousand on my, you know, at least my lease was four hundred dollars a month, uh, which was, you know, super low compared to what it is now. Um, so it's a great way to go, is if you start small and you basically build, um, and that's what what I did. You know, it, it's first because an experience where you don't really know how, you know, someone comes in with let's just say a disc injury, and you're like, man, you know. I really in school, I was, you know, hey, this person going to get better in, you know, four visits. They're going to get better in 12 visits or 18 or 24. So it's that confidence that you got to build up. And, um, you know, that just comes with experience. So I think that if you go ahead, you know, I'm open. If you guys ever want to come check out our clinic and watch how we work, we have tons of interns that come learn from us. But, um, you know, you need to gain some sort of insight. No, because, you know, in school, you know, schools tailored, in my opinion, it's great. You, you, you learn a lot of information, how to pack boards, but then you left like, man, how do I treat, you know, this person with MS? Um, there's really no, my opinion, no clearly defined, and, hey, these people in dairy value, food sensitivity testing, you know, autistic kids, you know, why these kids have eczema and beat their head on the table? you know, and constantly not sleeping at night because, you know, iPads, we're not taught that. And I think you need to gain some experience within that. But yes, I, you know, I think that students could definitely, you know, build this, um, you know, patients fly into our clinic from all over the country. Um, you know, we do have a couple people that come in, a guy come in from Australia for Parkinson's treatment, but, um, you know, word of mouth is awesome for our clinic. You know, we don't advertise, we do use social media, we use Facebook a very active Facebook page. Um, and I think that, you know, our grade would be more digital because, you know, Facebook, in my opinion, is a great way for advertisement because, you know, a lot of patients for to do, they wake up in the morning is go to Facebook um, or maybe Instagram or Twitter and they're constantly scrolling and you want to be part of that scroll because of that person maybe has a migraine headache and, you know, your clinic has mentioned, hey, you know, we do great work for migraine. You know, patients see that and it's like, hey, that's a great form of free advertisement. And that's really, the way we worked was, um, like I said, it was, it was pretty much um, bare dry. And then, you know, we grew. And, um, you know, if I can do it, I think anyone can. You know, it's kind of kind of auto you hear from a lot of people. But true, it really is true that it just takes, uh, it takes determination. It takes persistency. And um, I would tell you what I learned late is um being prepared you know preparation you know i got to where now um we have a goal list and you know we have a set goal for having 
month? Um, um, you know, patient visits do we want in a month? You know, and again, because you got to make sure that you have a, a everything's properly managed. Because if you're running a high volume practice, very well, you know, orchestrated. You know, patients if they're not getting the you know the care they want, you know, they're going to get frustrated and go find someone who you know, we kind of ourselves on on that right there. And, and what we do also is um, surveys. So in the very front, we we have a survey. You know, we ask about us of our office, the staff, any recommendations, um, you know, how do you like our monthly health talks, stuff like that to get feedback and thinking uh, and evolving with, you know, the times, you know, you become that kind of dinosaur clinic that's just using ice and, and stem and uh, you while you're somewhere else. I can't hear you anymore. Oh wait, I would. I'm I'm back now. Sorry about that. Um, so 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 much great advice there. You know, really coming back to those three keys that you mentioned, like having being prepared, having those tools in your toolbox, really like you know offering the highest quality care to people, and then having that uh, you know flow in the office setting. Um, you know, you, you've been doing this for a little while now, not, not a ton, almost a decade, something like that. Um, what, what do you see as kind of the, the future of healthcare, chiropractic, neurology, functional neurology, functional medicine, like what, where, where is your vision extend when you write down on the, that goal sheet? The last bit cut out when the last, what would you say the last bit? Uh, the last bit was just like, what, what is your vision for the next 10 to 20 years of, of your pra practice in healthcare in general? So I'll, I'll kind of break it down to two. I think healthcare in general, uh, patient tired of taking medication. Uh, you know, I never, I've never seen a, you know, my initial intake that, you know, one of the goals we always ask our patients, what are your goals? I've never seen someone say, Hey, I want to take medication. Always one of their goals is, hey, I want to get off of medication. And, um, you know, when I'd look at this person saying, okay, well, um, you know, if you go with a chronic condition, it's not going to just overnight, you're just magically, your MS is going to go away or your ulcerative colitis is going to go away. You know, we have to figure out, number one, what's called inflammation. I'm a big fan of testing. You know, we don't just go ahead and just start dishing out a bunch of nutrition. Uh, we want to tailor. We want to make sure that it's custom to exactly you, sensitivity testing. We want to know, you know, do you have any allergens? What are you sensitive to? And then we tailor our kind of gut restoration and liver detoxification program. And then I also do testing for, you know, vitamins and minerals. I want to know how your vitamin D levels are, you know, how are your B vitamins? Can you methylate? Um, so we kind of tailor our product. And, you know, I do see, and I'm in a, I'm in a small town, I say small, I'm in a decent sized town in Louisiana. You know, patients, you know, the, um, the media, um, kind of middle class, lower class kind of population. And sometimes patients can't afford that. And, you know, we do offer payment plans where patients, you know, have to sometimes pay over duration of some time to afford. But um, that's one of the things that you run into is because patients, you know, I, I'm in, I'm still in insurance too, which is a little bit where they're not, you know, taking insurance. Um and, you know, I was cash earlier on. I did go to insurance and, you know, I promised that I was still cash uh, just because of, you know, there's a lot of restrictions with insurance and treatment plan options and stuff like that. But um, I'm doing it. Um, I've been doing it for seven years. Um, but that's something that I see a barrier that you run. But then, you know, we talk to patients all the time and it's like, hey, you know, uh, insurance is going to cover not going to going to cover this. Um, you know, in my opinion, I think insurance is, it's people live by their card and that's not the way because that when, when someone controlling your, you know, your care, um, who's not a doctor, it's a little challenging because it's like, Hey, but you know, they're paying, you know, 600 to $2,000 a month for insurance and they want to use it. So uh, I see healthcare going, you know, that kind of route where if you really want to fix people, and you know, really make significant impact that you have to be able to merge 
functional medicine and functional neurology and chiropractic together. Um, if you just want to have a functional medicine clinic, you're going to do great. Um, you know, changing people's it's work phenomenal. But yet, if you don't activate the nervous system while you're doing that, you're going to still plateau. If you're a functional neurologist and you're doing great with, you know, vestibular rehab and gaze fixation and brain localization and brain balance work, you know, receptor based therapy, you're going to then again, you're going to be where you plateau because you need that nutritional component. So it's integrated. The same thing with chiropractic. Chiropractic works awesome. I had a little grizzly and he literally had, was completely paralyzed with her arm. And then we started doing manipulations within her cervical spine. And then now she's got full range of motion in her left arm. It's like, you know, inch difference in the right. But yet, if I would have just did, you know, just manipulations, and I didn't do any sort of intervention with her, then that arm would have actually been significantly smaller. Or if we weren't doing some sort of vestibular rehab in conjunction with uh, manipulation, then the issue strength. So you got to integrate it. And that's where I see that really, truthfully, the doctors that people are going to drop two hours or five from Rochester, New York to come see for a TBI. You know, it's because if you integrate things, you're doing things different. And that's what people are looking for. They are getting tired of doing the same thing over and over again. You know, and you have your patients that are skeptical. And, you know, those skeptical patients, they still, they come to see, I see them all the time. People come see me and they're like, you know, skeptical. I'm like, hey, that's fine. You know, they're scared I'm going to do some sort of cervical manipulation on their neck and cause a stroke. And I'm like, hold on a second. You know, we have different... Um, you know, there's, there's different instruments that we can use that can actually help with a facilitating adjustment. Maybe you're to be just you know, your diet, having to, you know, stimulate one side of the brain through maybe, you know, color therapy or maybe acoustic intervention or, uh, maybe some big gates or gaze fixation. An adjustment to me is a change. And if someone is any sort of issue with their life and, and, you know, they're, they're looking for answers and that's where chiropractic in my opinion has a great staple is because that's what we do we give adjustments but that adjustment is a change it doesn't have to just completely be a manipulation uh, of the atlas or, or you know maybe a cervical break um, you just have to really know what kind of adjustments patients need Again, that variance. Um, so that's that. You know, my future. What I see chiropractic and something that we're working on is we get involved with the uh, uh, games. Um, so the company I have is called SNA Biotech, and we're making video games that's trying to integrate kind of like a sensory integration. You know, different visual components, different colors, different eye movements. You know, pursuits, odds. Um, we got involved with virtual reality where we're doing like gaze fixation, making different type of video games, putting people in different sceneries. You know, let's say you have a patient with RSD and, you know, they're, you know, have a natural world, taking them to a mountain or the snow, and I can actually do range of motion exercises and it actually disassociates pain terms. So there is kind of what I'm trying to kind of make a, uh, maybe at least have some sort of plug in the uh, functional neurology world is just taking all these, you know, gaze fixation, all these eye movement exercises and putting them into a, you know, 15 minute video game. I get yeah. Amped. I mean, that sounds incredible. Um, I'm really excited that you're doing that. And I, I can't wait to play one of those games and really see how it works. Um, I know that a lot of students are going to be really interested in all the work that you're doing. So, you know, what, what's the call to action? What, where can students get involved? Where do they start? You know, how do, how do students um, really kind of follow in your footsteps, so to speak? So I'll tell you this. I, um, from an educational standpoint, works great. Great school. Awesome. Um, and I think that start learning stuff. There's a great book by Dr. Robert Malilo called Disconnected Kids. I don't care who you are, what kind of this that you are having. I think that you need to read this. And, and again, why is because it talks about the development of the brain, um, talks about primitive free flexes, talks about colors, 
that have a different parts of the brain, you know, which type of essential oils activate different parts of the brain, um, even talks about some vestibular rehab and then specific exercises. Um, you know, you know, you talk to Dr. Malilo, guy's super smart, incredible, got a great passion, but, you know, he's all about everything begins in the brain. And, you know, you work with kids, you're going to see kids coming in with eczema, constipation, um, behavior problems, strabismus in their eye, um, you know, even cognitive function, ADHD, hyperact. And he's got a great tool for chiropractic students to learn, you know, what's the missing link? You know, it, there, it goes beyond the adjustment, which adjustments were great, but what's the missing link? And that's in the book. Um, Dr. Datiz Karazian's got a great book. Um, why is it my brain working? If you want to learn about functional medicine, read the book. Uh, he also has another book called, um, you know, my lab values are normal. Why do I still have thyroid symptoms? If you want to do some endocrinology work, that's a good book. You know, put a book, short, easy weekend reader. Um, the book is, uh, what if you knew, you know, it's a very short kind of tailored about, you know, I talk about music therapy, music therapy, talk about sound therapy, vibration therapy, chromotherapy, and nutrition, uh, more kind of on a paleo diet. And then um, also I'm very big into personal development, you know, writing goals out, making sure that you give your brain some sort of focus and a target to try to tackle. Uh, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. That's great. I think that was really great advice. You know, I've, I've read most of those books and they're all incredible books. I totally uh, uh, second what you're saying there in terms of value in terms of uh, the thought process that each of those remarkable doctors go through and and help developing that kind of thought process in yourself um, so yeah thanks so much for coming on the show really really appreciate all your all your knowledge we will leave my uh, my class someone will come by as if you just um, I'll give you my email address it's k daigle d-a-i-g-l-e at s-n-a biotech and then our clinic number is uh three three seven four two one zero zero one zero and uh you guys are more than to come shadow we always have tons of interns and i'll have sometimes uh, you know parker students i'll have you know maybe four or five come at a time we have a very big rehabber we do rehab very differently so uh at least if anything you might be able to learn a couple of things uh, you know, I just, I put a, po uh, at, uh, Parker, they had this, um, neurology program that I uh, have an ataxia case that came in and, uh, literally she couldn't hardly walk. And then we broke out, I have a color flashlight with diff different colors. Then we were using like light, the color blue and blue works great with ataxia cases. And it was pretty cool. We literally on some blue light and this significantly improved. So, uh, if you want to learn how to do some different rehab, um, and especially if you want to learn about virtual reality and augmented reality and uh, video can also be incorporated in rehab, come check us out. We are in Louisiana and, uh, I do have some locations around the country. If, if you guys go visit some other clinics as well. Awesome. Yeah, definitely reach out to Dr. Daigle. Um, so this has been a production of DC to be revolution, helping chiropractic students think big to live large, subscribe to the channel, leave some comments in the comment section below, uh, reach out to Dr. Daigle, you know, let's keep this conversation going and let's make sure that every chiropractic student who really wants to get into chiropractic neurology, functional medicine is able to do that successfully. And yeah, thanks again for your time.